Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we're on to pseudoscientist number five. And I think today's pseudoscientist, people probably expected him to show up. In fact, not only do I think people expected him to show up at some point, he's already been mentioned in the series. I am of course talking about Level Earth Observer, commonly known as LEO. Now if you don't know who Level Earth Observer is, he's a flat earther who refuses to be called a flat earther and would rather be called a demonstrable realist because, you know, he has realised that flat earthers sound silly. He's also someone that, for some strange reason, probably watches more videos from NASA than anybody else that I know. Of course, he's not watching them for entertainment purposes or anything. He's watching them all so that he can try to catch them out on something that they got wrong. Or at least something that he thinks that they got wrong. Often his evidence for them getting something wrong is very flimsy when you look at it. I don't think anyone's going to try and defend what we're going to watch today. It's an old clip from the old Skylab supposed space station era here. From the 70s. So Elio is now going back through clips from the 70s at this point. Elio, are you okay? Like I don't think it's healthy to watch the amount of stuff from NASA that Elio has, all to try and catch them out. So this is the clip in question. Skylab Space Station, old school NASA 1970s space. You've got the three so-called astronauts here on the space station in a so-called weightless environment. They're holding up a barbell set, two of them, for their pal here, which supposedly has 500 pounds on each end. So you're looking at, what, 450-ish kilograms, just under half a ton here. But of course, that should be nothing, because they're in a weightless environment, supposedly. Well, things still have mass in a weightless environment. It's just that if you want to lift something up, you don't have gravity opposing you. It's like the difference between lifting up a car and pushing a car. A car is a lot easier to push than it is to lift, because when you are pushing it, you don't have to worry about gravity acting in direct opposition to you. Now that doesn't make it no longer difficult to push, because it still has a lot of mass. So it's strange that he's needing his powers to hold the barbell set up in the first place, I'd guess that it's probably to keep it in place. You don't want someone to accidentally knock it and then have it fly into something that it shouldn't. The astronauts found they had extra time and requested flight planners to develop additional useful tasks for them to perform. <laughs> Just look at this. So he's got his pals holding this 450 kilogram weight here. He's like... Mm -hmm. Ready? Ooh, for NASA I can do this. Ooh, you got this? You got this? Yes! Hey Elio, um, one question. Why are we using our inside voices here? Because I'm pretty sure you can be a bit louder. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, from my point of view, it didn't really look like he was struggling at all. It did seem a little bit like he was trying to be a bit careful there. You don't want to push it too hard and have it bang into something that it shouldn't, causing a bit of damage to something. Hang on a minute, it's wobbling like balloons there, lads. You should have done it slower. You gave the game away quickly. Lift him up. It's a weightless environment. Honest. You know things have inertia even whilst in zero G, right? Well, technically it's freefall, but, you know, people generally refer to freefall as zero G. But you do realise that things still have inertia in there, right? So if it didn't wobble or anything, then that would actually look suspicious. Unless they were using, I don't know, a metal alloy bar or something that wasn't malleable. This is obviously a silly pantomime setup. With, like, balloon-type props here that are supposedly very heavy weights but look how it wobbles there ready wobbling about all over the place remember this should be effortless anyway because he's supposedly in a weightless environment if it were effortless then that would actually be suspicious because those weights have inertia the fact that it does take a bit of effort is more indication that it's likely real. One thing that I've noticed with Flat Earth is, is that if the things that they say should happen happened, then that wouldn't actually disprove their point. It would actually be more evidence for their point. So he should be able to lift this with his one finger, but he's gone over the top here with this performance. I don't know, Elio, have you ever tried pushing a shopping trolley filled with 50 kilograms of potatoes with one finger? Now, I personally haven't, but 
10 kilograms of potatoes does make it significantly harder. Is anyone going to come here and try and defend this? Yes, I will, because what you've got there is really reaching. You need to ignore things like inertia. And that's the only way that you can somehow make an argument out of this. Look, if I said to everyone, hey look, I've changed my mind on NASA lying to us and this is my evidence for why I've changed my mind on it, I would get ridiculed to oblivion. In fact, if I did that, people would probably think that I'm joking and go, nice satire, mate. These weights that look like balloons. This weightless environment that supposedly requires loads of effort to lift something that looks like balloons. Look, I'm not seeing how you're getting balloons from this. And the reason why is, if they were balloons, they would be flapping around a lot faster. Look, Elio, I don't think you have a grasp on how these things actually work. What I think you're seeing is something that you think looks vaguely like a balloon on a stick, and you're going, ah, yes, it looks kind of like that, so therefore it must be that. Whoever made this clip was either telling us the silliness that is space or was just having a laugh. Or you're just looking for something that you think looks weird to you because you don't actually know how things would look in space. Which makes sense considering that you don't even believe that space is real. Those weights wobbling up and down there. One last time. How many times is he going to show that he doesn't understand inertia? I mean, talk about redundancy, he repeats this so many times to add nothing new. What a pantomime performance. So over the top. And yet people will believe this tosh. What's more incredible is people will point to that as evidence that NASA is faking everything. Unbelievable how people will believe that tosh. Now look at this. Cost of space payloads in the 70s. Between 1970 and the year 2000, the cost to launch a kilogram to space remained fairly steady, with an average of cost being 18000 five hundred dollars per kilogram okay so now we do the math and we get a figure when we add up the weight of that barbell set it turns out that barbell set just to get to so-called space cost the american taxpayer over eight million dollars well if we go back and turn the sound on in the video remember when they said this the astronauts found they had extra time and requested flight planners to develop additional useful tasks for them to perform. So they were doing something useful there. Now, you might ask, okay, but what were they doing with that that was useful? Seriously. Now, I don't know the full answer to that, but I can take a guess, and my guess would be that they were trying to keep in shape. Because when you're in zero gravity, you don't use your muscles nearly as much as just when you're on Earth. This does end up causing muscle atrophy, which can be a big issue for astronauts. A way to do this is to have astronauts perform tasks that use as many of their muscles as possible. As the saying goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I'm pretty sure there are plenty of people out there that can attest to this. So this is what an $8 million barbell set looked like back in the 1970s. Oh, what a bargain. A couple of balloons stuck to the end of a broom handle. Bargain! Wait, I'm confused. Did this cost $8 million or not, Helio? Because the only way for it to cost $8 million is if it were actually 450 metric pounds and for it to actually go to space. And the American public paid for this and no doubt many people believed this silliness. Look at it. Expensive BS. Wait, it, it does sound like he is saying that this cost $8 million, but he, he doesn't trust NASA. Basically what it sounds like he's saying is you can't trust NASA, but you can trust NASA about how much this costs, which doesn't make any sense to me. One last time. A broom handle, a couple of balloons. This cost over $8 million. And look at it bouncing about. Yep. That definitely sounds like he's saying that you can't trust NASA, but you can trust NASA. He's trying to have it both ways here. Either you trust NASA on this, or you don't. You can't do both. Supposed to be nearly half a ton there. <clears throat> Go on, you can lift them broom handles. That broom handle and them cut the balloons. Why weights no act like feathers in space? Me no understand.
That's his whole argument there. So I think this is where we should leave Elio for today. Actually, no. I've got an idea. So Elio, your video today was you not realizing that weights don't act like feathers in space. You repeating constantly the same thing over and over again, and you ended up contradicting yourself. With all this in mind, how would you describe your video? Absolute tosh. You know what, Elio? I think that's something that we can all agree on. So. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think is going to show up in the next video. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge Jars, MC Narkin, Mori, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me... Thank you for watching.